All right, guys. So what we're going to do today is we're going to set up our Haas tool room mill to do our tapping plate. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the power on in the back of the machine on the breaker. We will release our emergency stop and we will hit our power on. So what we're going to do once this power is on is we're going to reset the alarm and then we will send the machine to its home location. We are always need to send our machine to its home location so that it knows where it's at after it's been powered on. Okay, so what I have here is I have my alarm. I'm gonna hit reset one time. And then I'm gonna hit power up restart. Okay, so if you'll look on the screen at my X and my Y, you'll see they're gonna start moving into position. Now once they highlight, my machine is at home position. But if you'll notice, my Z didn't go home. So what I'm gonna to have to do is over here on the side, is I'm gonna grab my machine release button and I'm gonna push and hold while I push that power up restart button again. So what that does is that brings my Z home and now I'm in position. So I will need this again later to run my machine. I'm gonna let go of it and I'm gonna put it back over here. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our machine. So if you look at our picture, you'll see that we have all the tools and parts that we need to make this part. You'll see that we have our edge finder, we have our facing tool, we have our engraving tool, which we'll be using a center drill for. I have my vice handle, my material, my one, two, three block, and my inch and a half parallels, okay? So I have all my tools with me. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to load our program, which we should have on our USB. So over here on the side of the machine, I'm going to plug that in and then I'm going to go into my edit mode so edit and then I'm going to come up here see how this is all blinking up here if I push F1 I can now activate these tabs at the top so we're going to move over to the input output function we will cursor down to this directory and down here in the bottom right hand corner it says right enter so that is our tapping plate, that's what we need. So again, we're gonna come down to right enter, push it again, and it will load that program into the machine. So once it's loaded in there, we know that's what we want. I'm gonna hit edit one more time. That's gonna activate that program. It is activated, but it's gonna allow me to uh, start making edits to it if need be, or to look through it, which is what we're about to do. So I know that it is my tapping plate. It is for the tool room mill, okay? got the programmer when it was updated now setup information this is something we really want to pay attention to so I've got my material which is four inches by four inches by 375 thousandths thick my X Y zero okay that is my work offset that is where the machine thinks the part is at is the top left corner so we're looking down so if we were looking down on the part it would be this corner right here of my material, okay? We're gonna use our edge finder to find that. Our Z0 is gonna be not the top of my part, but it's gonna be a minus 200, I'm sorry, 25 thousandths from the top of my part, okay? So what we'll do is we'll touch off the top of our part and then we'll actually make a shift down 25 thousandths from the top of our part. We'll be using our hard jaws. Our hard jaws are one inch, 500 thousandths tall, okay? And our parallels. And then we're gonna be vicing on the four inch with side that is not sawed, okay? We'll be vicing on 300 thousandths max. So that's a lot of information right here. So just take it one at a time. That's our location, that's our Z, and this is what we're using to hold onto the part, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, got our two tools, right? We have our face mill and our engraver. We're gonna go ahead and set the tool links on those tools right now, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into handle mode, okay? Because when I'm in handle, I can come over to my spindle and load that tool. So on your spindle, you have a tool release button, okay? So the first tool that I'm gonna put into my machine is gonna be my face mill, okay? So I wanna inspect my inserts and I wanna make sure that they're all nice and sharp my number busted up and I'm gonna put on the spindle you have two uh, 
pin like things that are uh, hanging down, they're called drive lugs, okay? We have the drive lugs that are coming down off the bottom of the spindle. When I put the spindle up in there, my drive lug will go in between right there, okay? So I'm gonna push and hold the tool release button and put my tool into the spindle. Now you'll wanna maintain pressure up while you're holding the button and when you have it in the correct location, that's when you go ahead and let go of the button. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my one, two, three block to set my tool links, okay? So we wanna make sure that this surface is nice and smooth and free of chips and nice and sliding around, okay? That's where we want it to be. So what I'm gonna do is while I'm handled, I'm gonna go into my X axis. Now notice I have these increments that I can handle in, okay? This is 100, this is 10 thousandths, 1 thousandths, 1 tenth. I never want to be in the hundred thousandths, okay? The most I want to be is in the ten thousandths. So let's select ten thousandths, X axis, and then we're going to move over to our one, two, three block. Now this will take a minute after we've homed out our machine because it's kind of far away. So once I've come over my one, two, three block, that's good. I'm going to move down on top of my one, two, three block by hitting the Z axis, okay? So as you can see, I'm coming into view. There's my tool. I'm gonna move into my Y axis, come towards it a little bit, and then I'll move over to center it up, okay? Now, I'm pretty close to where I wanna be. So once I'm close, and I say close as in I'm about an inch away from my one, two, three block, I wanna reduce my increments to one thousandths. You can see on your screen what that is, okay? So I wanna be in the Z axis, and what I wanna do is I wanna come down below my one, two, three block. So once I'm touching my one, two, three block, I wanna put pressure towards my one, two, three block and start coming up until I go underneath it. See that I'm going underneath it. I'm gonna come back down a couple turns, okay? Or I'm sorry, a few clicks. And then I'm gonna come up slowly one at a time. Notice how I don't have my finger right here. I have my whole hand on the hand wheel. So one at a time until there until it goes right underneath it on all inserts, okay? So once that's done, I'm gonna go to my offset. I'm gonna push offset. And if you hit offset again, that puts me in my work offsets. Well, I don't wanna set my work offsets yet. I wanna set my length offset, okay? My length geometry, okay? Now this is tool one. So I wanna make sure that my cursor is selected on tool one, and I'm gonna to hit tool offset measure. When I push that, it's gonna input my machine coordinates for that right there, okay? So right here, that's how far down I am from my home position. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in the handle, and I'm gonna come up. Okay, I'm going the right direction, so I'll increase my increments. I'm just gonna come up to where I can load the other tool into the spindle, okay? So the next tool I'm gonna be loading is gonna be my center drill, okay? Just make sure the center drill's not broke on the tip and make sure that it's nice and sharp, okay? So I'm gonna push and hold the tool release button before I do, I've got a good grip on my tool. So I'll push and hold, okay? Now I'm gonna grab it, remember, this is the slot. I want my drive lug, when I put it into the tool, into the spindle, I want my drive lugs to go in there, in that gap. So push and hold, and then it goes right in, okay? You should be able to visually see the drive lug around in the middle of that tool slot, okay? So we're gonna come back down, in Z. Notice how we're close, okay? Once we're close, I'm gonna reduce my increments to one thousandths putting my hand on the hand wheel, not my fingers, okay? My hand is on the hand wheel, and I'm gonna come down until I'm below the part. Once I'm below the part, I come up until I go underneath my tool. I'll come down a few clicks, and notice I'm putting pressure towards the tool, okay? So I come up, looks like I was pretty close, I'm underneath my tool, okay? So now I'm gonna go offsets, okay? I'm gonna select my wear, or I'm sorry, my length 
geometry for tool number two. And then I'm gonna hit tool offset measure. If I come up here and I hit it, it's gonna be wrong, okay? So I need to make sure I have the correct tool highlighted, tool offset measure, okay? Now from this point, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm wanting to find out this location, okay? That is the G54Z. I'm gonna go ahead and start setting my work offsets because my tool length offsets are already done, okay? So the thing is, I never wanna use G52, okay? You wanna use whatever work offset you're using, whether it be G54 through G59, whichever one your program's using is the one you want to set, okay? So G54, Z. So what am I trying to do? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and load my part in here. Okay. Now here's my part. And I want to make sure that I'm going to be vising on the not solid surface. Okay. So before I do that, let's go ahead and raise this up so we can see. Okay. So here's my parallels right here. So I'm going to come and put my parallels in there and make sure everything's nice and clean. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and load my part in there. And I'm gonna get it as close as I can to the side of my jaws. If I want to, I could use my one, two, three block and I can hold it up there and slide it up next to my part. Okay, so we'll go ahead and tighten this down with our vise handle. And then once we get it in there, usually I use a dead blow hammer, but I'm using it to make sure it's down. Okay, so that the moves. All right, and then we'll give her a little bit more time. Now, when I say a little bit more, that doesn't mean put your whole body weight on it. It means give it a little bit more, okay? So let's come back down to where my tool's above the one, two, three block. Okay. All right, so that's good. So we're right where we were. So now I'm gonna go position, and then I'm gonna hit page down, okay? Page down. So I can see my Z axis is blinking, okay? Now this blinking on whatever axis you have active, whether it be Y, X, and in the case that we're using, Z. So what I need to do is I need to tell my machine how far it is from the top of my one, two, three block to the top of this surface right here, okay? So I have to know where this is, which is why I am going to origin Make that Z zero, right? So this is my starting point. So pay attention because where a lot of people get lost right here. I need to know the distance from here to there. That is a plus direction because I'm going from the top of here to the top of there. I'm going up, Z positive, okay? <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into handle. I'm in Z axis, handle up. Now we can change our increments. I'm gonna come over on top of my part. Okay, part should be pretty flat. I'm close to my part, so I'm gonna reduce my increments, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a piece of paper and I'm gonna slide back and forth over my material so that way I don't bring my tool directly onto the part, okay? So, I'm gonna come down Z so we're pretty close. And go slow, this will take a little bit of time to get used to, okay? So I'm just going to come down until I'm close. I'm going to keep moving that paper back and forth. Once that paper stops, that's when I'm at the top of my Z. Okay, so now my paper does not move anymore. Okay, so when I look at this, the distance from the top of my one, two, three block to the top of my material is one inch, 755 thousands okay this number is what we want to put right there that way our machine knows that it's up one inch seven hundred and fifty five thousandths so we'll go back to our position we'll type in one inch seven hundred and fifty five thousandths okay I will push offsets again because I am highlighted right here all I'm gonna do is put right enter because this is a zero, I can also hit F1. But if I was trying to add the numbers together, I would use right to add 
F1 to set. So I always do the right add down here in the bottom right hand corner. That is what the number should look like, okay? If you hit part zero set, it will put negative 12 inches, 226 thousandths there that you're gonna crash, okay? That's not gonna be fun. So that's where you're gonna be at. So we make sure this positive number goes in there as a positive, okay? So now we've got our Z set. Now we need to set our X and our Y. So what we have to do is we're gonna have to load another tool in there. So I'll go back in the hand jog. Make sure I go the positive direction to go up. So that's clockwise. I'm gonna push and hold the tool release button. Okay, get my paper out of here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load my edge finder, okay? If you guys haven't already watched the video on how to use the edge finder, be sure and do that now, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load my edge finder. Make sure that it goes between the drive lugs. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into MDI, okay? So in MDI, I'm gonna type in S, spindle speed, 1200, and a spindle direction. Now more, usually you'll do an M3, okay? But based on where I'm looking at so that you all can see what's going on, I'm gonna change it from clockwise rotation to counterclockwise rotation. So when the edge finder breaks over, you can actually see it break over. So I'm gonna put an end of block on there and I'm gonna hit right enter, okay? At this point in time, we need to get our machine release button. We're gonna push and hold it and push cycle start, okay? Now what you'll notice when I let go of it, my spindle slows down, okay? That's okay, We're, that's as fast as we need to go. So I'm gonna put my release, my machine release button right there, and we're gonna set our X and our Y offsets. So, handle, okay, let's come down next to our part. If you notice, you see me coming out on top of my part, don't do that. Change to X, come over to the side. Okay, I'm close to my part. I'm gonna reduce my increments. Okay. I'm gonna change into my X. So if you'll notice, I'm coming into the side of my edge finder next to the part. So if you look at it, if you notice it broke over. So right there looks pretty straight. So if I go a couple more clicks, you actually see it break over. It doesn't break over very much, but it does break over, okay? So at this point in time, I need to origin out my X axis so I know where the edge of that tool is, okay? But I wanna be on the center of that tool. So I have to come up in Z, because I don't wanna come over the top of my part. And then I'm gonna go X again. Now the diameter of that edge finder is 200 thousandths. So I'm gonna come over half the diameter of my edge finder, okay? So if you look at it, I'll come down a little bit closer so you can see. If you look at it, it's over the center of the edge. The center of my tool is over the edge of the part, okay? So from here, my machine needs to know that location. So I'm gonna hit offsets. I am doing the X, okay? Because I'm going left and right. I'm gonna hit part zero set. Okay, so now that my machine knows where the X is, we're gonna set it up and tell it where the Y is. So I'm gonna go back to handle, we'll go back to position page, and then I'm gonna come over in X onto my part, okay? That way I'm not right on the corner of it. So what I'll do is I'll come over and I'm gonna come down in Z, okay? Now be careful when you come down in Z because you don't wanna come down on top of your material, okay? Also, if you'll notice, my edge finder isn't wiggling as much as it was before. So to get it to do that, we're just gonna take our fingers and give it a little flick, okay? I'm not trying to flick it across the room. I'm just trying to get it off center, okay? So Z's blinking. We wanna be moving forwards and backwards towards us, okay? So I'm gonna go into my Y, okay? Make sure my increments are low because I'm already close to my part. We're just gonna come into it, okay? So we're gonna handle into it. Remember, not your fingers, put your whole hand on the hand wheel. 
So it looks pretty straight, but we're not there yet until it breaks over. So, as you can see, it broke over. Just a couple more thousandths and it does break over, okay? So the same thing, we're going to origin our Y. We're gonna come up in Z until we're over the top of our part. Go back into Y. And then I'm gonna move over half the diameter of my edge finder, okay? So if I bring this down kind of close, you can see that the middle of my tool is on the edge of my part, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our offsets because our machine needs to know where that's at. And I'm gonna hit part zero set. It's gonna put my machine location in that column. Now remember, don't hit part zero set here because we've already set that, okay? Here's the good news, we're done. We have set up our tools and we have set up our X, Y, and Z locations so our machine knows where everything's at. So at this point, I'm gonna hit reset I'm gonna be in handle, and I'm gonna come up off the top of my part. Once we're far enough away, I can increase my increments, okay? So I'm gonna take my tool out of the spindle. Push and hold the tool release button. Now one thing I want you to pay attention to, okay? We're gonna simulate it first, and then I'm gonna load the correct tool into the spindle. So to simulate, I'm gonna go memory, current commands, settings, graphics now you don't have to hit current commands that's a habit that i do so settings graphics okay if i hit f4 i can see my part program so i'm going to hit cycle start as long as settings graphics is right here when i hit cycle start my machine will not go anywhere okay so cycle start that's my facing tool okay so it's going to start off on the bottom right and then i got my engraver okay my machine will come up and tell me to load the engraver because we're on a tool room mill Okay, so what you can see there is it is doing the engraving and what you'll want to do is watch this all the way through to make sure that there are no alarms, okay? I'm not going to sit here and make you guys watch the whole thing, so I'm going to hit reset. I'm going to go back to memory and current commands, okay? Now if you look at your tool, okay, it says tool one is in the spindle. So if I hit cycle start, it thinks the correct tool is already in the spindle. Because if I go edit page down, tool one, okay, if it thinks tool ones are in the spindle, it's not gonna stop. It will turn on without a tool in the spindle or it will turn on with the wrong tool in the spindle, okay? So we're gonna hit reset, memory, current commands, okay? So we can see tool one is in the spindle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna manually load tool one into the spindle, okay? So we'll go ahead and grab our face mill. Remember to inspect your face mill to make sure that there's no broke edges on there. Okay, everything looks pretty good. We'll make sure that we are in a manual mode, like hand jog or MDI. We'll push and hold the tool release button and put our tool around the drive lugs, okay? So what I'll do is I'll go back to memory, current commands. So up here on the top right, I have this position page, okay? It's actually everything that's in our position page, okay? All up here on the top. Well, I want to be on the distance to go so I can tell where my tool is gonna be going, okay? So, we're at the top of our program. Let's shut our doors. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hit cycle start. But before we can hit cycle start, we have to have our machine release button, okay? So I'm gonna push and hold this button. Then I'm gonna push cycle start. Before we do, down here in the bottom on the overrides, I'm gonna put my machine at 25% rapid, okay? So I'm more in control of the machine. So everything looks good. Cycle start. It's moving to the right location. Spindle's gonna come on. So when I get close to my part, I'm gonna hit feed, hold, okay? So I should be an inch above my part. It looks like I'm about an inch and a half above my part. If I look at my distance to go, it's saying that I'm supposed to be like, I got five eighths left to go until I get there. That looks good, okay? Now if this said Z minus 12 inches, and I'm an inch above my part, you need to go ahead and stop, okay? But that looks good, so we're gonna hit cycle start. Okay, 
okay? So if you'll notice, we're not cleaning up, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and let this tool finish running. So if you run into this occurrence where the tool is not cleaning up the top of your material, we need to go back to our setup instructions and see if there's something we missed. We'll speed this up a little bit. Okay, so you'll see that it touched it just a little bit. So what I want to do is I'm going to hit reset. Okay, so if I go back to my setup information, I set my Z, but if you'll remember, Z0 is not the top of the part. Z0 is a minus 25 thousandths from the top of the part. So what we'll do to fix that is we'll go offsets. Right here, I'm going to type in minus 0 0.025 for 25 thousandths and I'm not gonna push F1. If I push F1, okay, it's gonna set it. It will set it to a minus 25 thousandths. We don't wanna do that, okay? Because that will be a minus 25 thousandths below our one, two, three block where we set the tools. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do right add, okay? Right down in the bottom right hand corner will add that to us, making that a little bit lower, okay? So now we've changed that. Let's go memory, current commands, Notice how it says tool two in the spindle, that's fine because it's gonna tell us to put tool one into the spindle. So I'm gonna push and hold my machine release switch. We're gonna hit cycle start, insert tool one. We didn't take tool one out, so I can still just hit cycle start one more time. put the minus 25 thousandths into our work offset like our setup information told us to we are now cutting correctly okay so what this is doing is it's going through and facing my material so once this material is faced I have a nice smooth surface so my engraving tool can come down and start engraving which you probably won't be able to see very well but at least it will still run through it so you can see what it's going to be doing. So now my tool is done facing. So what it's going to do is it's going to go back home. And you can tell it wants me to load tool number two. Okay. So what I'll do is I can let go of my machine release button. And I can push and hold the tool release button. And I'm going to load my engraver. Okay which I'm using my center drill. Make sure that the tool goes around the drive lugs, okay? Grab my machine release button, push the button, cycle start to continue. Remember, we're gonna push our feed hold once we get there so we make sure that we're not gonna crash. So I'm gonna stop it an inch above my part Okay, it says I have three quarters of an inch to go until I'm an eighth of an inch above it. So that looks right. So I'm gonna hit cycle start. And it's gonna go through and start doing our engraving, All right? Once this is done, you can take your part out, deburr it so you don't cut yourself and blow off the machine. And then this machine's ready for the next person, all right? And that's all I got for setting up the Haas tool room mill.